Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and this might just be one of the biggest generational leaps we've ever seen in the one liter PC series, because this is the Dell Optiplex 7000 Micro. <laughs> And so as part of that, not only are we looking at this unit, but we also reviewed the previous generation unit that you can see, and we'll link that in the description. We've also looked at a number of the other, like, you know, 70, I think we looked at 70, 80, and probably like 70, 50. I mean, we've done like tons of these 7,000 series. We've done some of the lower end ones, like the 3,000 and 5,000 series. We did an absolutely ton of these things. And so I actually know uh, pretty much exactly not only how this compares to the previous generation of Dell systems, but also give you a really good idea of how they compare to like the HP and Lenovo systems that are contemporary even some of the older ones. This is gonna be a super fun review and I'm super excited to get to take you through this. I do, however, wanna just point out that Dell did send us this unit because these things are getting expensive and uh, you know, it just kinda of helps if we can not pay for some of the units, but still, we're gonna do something that's different from a lot of the reviews that you'll see online. We're actually gonna critique it. But since we do so many of these, uh, my kinda of idea is why don't we go jump over to the new set because that was designed specifically to be able to review little systems like these. Okay, now we're here on the new set and let's take a look at the system. Now, in case you didn't know, this is the new little STH set that we have and I actually built this set specifically because uh, well, we were thinking about it and we we're like, hey, the other set actually works pretty well with like large systems. When we do small things, um, it's just too big. And so we thought that something with like a table, again, would be kind of nice that like we used to do over a year ago. And so that's exactly why we have this. You can see that this desk is actually, uh, so you can actually see the front of these systems. And something that we just added was the ability to go and join the STH channel all of the budget that we're gonna use or we get from those memberships, we're actually gonna go plow back into things like Project Tiny Mini Micro and other projects that we do that are just kind of fun and we end up buying a lot of stuff for. And so if you can support us, that'd be awesome. But with that, let's get to the hardware. Now, the Dell Optiplex 7000 Micro is a one liter-ish PC. They're actually a little larger than one liter, but we always call them one liter, and that's just kind of what the market segment is. But I want to just kind of show you one kind of fun feature of these. Now, you can see that we have this in the horizontal position right here, and it's just kind of sitting on the desk just like this. But you'll also notice that it's meant to go vertically as well. Okay, a couple fun things here. So first off, the 7090 was the previous generation system, and then before that was 7080, 7070, and so forth. But we now have the 7000 series, the Optiplex 7000 micro series. And I guess they just kind of, they got to nine and then said, oh, well, I guess we're just gonna start over from zero again. And that's what they're doing here. So this is one of those weird cases where the 7000 series is actually a newer version than the 7090 or the 7080. The other thing though, and the reason that I actually flipped these horizontally is that although you can see that now we have things like the Dell logo and also the model number that are in the correct orientation, you're gonna see that on the front of the system, we no longer have the correct correct USB orientation. You can actually see here that the USB ports, they are labeled to be horizontal, but when we get to things like the headset and also the uh, hard drive uh, indicator and stuff like that, uh, those labels are actually set to be vertical as well. So if you uh, haven't noticed that and you have one of these and you're just kind of one of those kinds of people, that is gonna annoy you to no end now that I've shown it to you. But let's get to the kind of features that we have here. We of course have our power button with the little LED that says we have power. We have our line out and headset jack. And then really, I think the big ones, of course, are the fact that we have these two USB ports. Now in this generation, we have a USB type C, which is a 20 gigabit per second port. And then there's also a 10 gigabit per second port. One thing, by the way, that I really like that Dell does here is they just put a number like, hey, this is 20, this is 10 or five or whatever it is, just to say like, this is how fast the port is. I think that's so much better than all the normal USB naming. Thank you, Dell, this is a great feature. But did you notice the other thing about those USB ports? Because maybe you didn't. And let me show you to you real quick. So if I put the old model next to the new model, you're gonna immediately hopefully see what they changed. In this generation, they actually flipped where the USB type A and type C ports are. And these are not the only ones that they flipped in this new generation, which of course they're new generations. So of course they can do that, but it just kind of feels like, uh, like you know, you have the same port configuration. Like why couldn't we have the same, you know, why couldn't they be in the same place, right? It's kind of like a little detail that again, if you stack them up next to each other, you're gonna notice immediately just like we have here. Okay, now moving to the back of the unit, we get some really cool features here that are definitely kind of newer in this generation. The first feature, let's just talk about the display outputs. There are three standard display port outputs, which is absolutely awesome. This little system driving three displays, cool, but we've definitely seen that before. 
What is also nice though, is the fact that we have an optional port and that allows us to add an HDMI port in this case. Now Dell has other options. You can get another display port and there's other things you can get in this. One of the ones that I would personally configure this if I were ordering this on Dell's configurator, I would probably get the USB type C port because you can just never have enough of those. Now the other feature that we get is we get a one gigabit ethernet port and then this little nub right here is protecting the Wi-Fi. It's usually this is where the Wi-Fi would go in a Dell system. And so I think that's actually what that protrusion is. Now on this system, we get three USB ports. Now these three back USB ports are all type A ports. There's one five gigabit per second port, which we get a five next to, and then two 10 gigabit per second ports. Now, something I do want to point out real quick is that we are using the 65 watt chassis. Dell actually has two different chassis. There's the 35 watt TDP one, but this is the higher end 65 watt TDP one. And that also impacts the rear of the systems because if you're on the rear of the systems, what you'll notice real quick, the 35 watt chassis actually has four USB ports, but only has two display outputs. Now, I'm not going to lie here. I, I actually kind of wish that Dell had not just the three display outputs, but they also had four USB ports. Because again, you can never have too many USB ports basically, right? Okay, we're gonna be done with that for a little bit, but I wanna show you just getting inside the system. So if you wanna get inside the system, there's this nice little screw here. And this is actually something that Dell does uh, probably best in the industry is just the serviceability if you don't have this all locked up, is being able to get inside. Now. What you do is you just unscrew this. This is a captive screw, so it doesn't come out like some other vendors have. The other thing that Dell has, and you're gonna see this real quick, is this little thing right here is actually to hold the power supply cable so you can go and put your power supply in and you know you won't be able to tug it out. Again, this is a small feature, but it's a nice one. It's actually one that Dell changed in this generation. But with that, let's get inside the system and show you all the really cool features here. Okay, so looking at this unit, you're gonna see something that if you've seen our Project Tiny Mini Micro series, you've probably seen this from Dell and also HP has a very similar internal design. On the top, we have our CPU and then this is our cooling assembly. We'll show you inside of that in a sec. We're just gonna give you the layout. We also have under here, we have our dims under the fan. And then as we get to the bottom, we have our storage and wireless. Now there are a couple things here that you're gonna immediately notice if you've seen these uh, reviews, which really, let's kind of talk about what they are. First one, uh, there is no two and a half inch cage here or anything like that. A lot of the older Dell units, including that 7090, over there had a SATA, like a hard SATA mounting point, And then they had a little toolless tray that you'd use to mount a two and a half inch drive. This new unit does not have that. The other thing that you'll see here is that there's this, these little pads that say for a slot, but we don't actually have a slot. Maybe that's for like a PCIe thing, but I couldn't actually find, uh, when I looked through the specs, I didn't actually see like a DGPU option. Now staying on this bottom part of the system, you can see our little riser board. And this is for our HDMI slot, which is our optional slot on the back. And then we're gonna, let's just talk about this whole storage and wireless thing here. The first one that you're gonna see is that you'll see that we do have an SSD. This is an M.2 PCIe Gen 4 SSD. And this thing is actually reasonably fast. Um, you know, we benchmarked it and I'll just kind of throw that up there here. And you can see like crystal disk mark, this thing's actually pretty decently fast. The one thing I did notice though, is that this does not have great airflow. And we did get this SSD up to 75, 76 degrees Celsius, uh, pretty darn easily just in, in CDM. And so that's just something that I would point out is just, I, I'm a little bit nervous of how hot this gets. I kind of wish that in a Dell system that they would actually go put a heat sink on this because just to me, feels like, you know, if this thing's hitting 75 degrees Celsius or higher, I just kind of feel like that $1 part to make your storage a little bit better performing or potentially a little safer. I think that just would have been wise. Now, if you do want to put more storage, there is another M.2 slot here that's not populated, but you can see it on the bottom of the motherboard. Now in the middle, you're going to see that we have a Wi-Fi solution, and this is an Intel AX211. Now, of course, people are going to look at this video in a couple of years. And if you are buying these things in a couple of years, something to just know is that pretty much all these systems you're going to find will have had storage at some point, if a reseller takes it out, maybe that's just for data protection or something like that. The other thing though, is that this wireless, not all these units get configured with wireless. And if you don't have wireless built in, you may not also have like the antenna infrastructure in here. And so it's just kind of, it's not expensive to put in, but it is just kind of a pain. Okay, now getting into this unit, uh, let's just kind of open this up and I'm gonna kind of show you this. You know, this little thing right here is actually a speaker, which is uh, I think super fun. And then uh, aside from the speaker, you have this kind of whole Foxconn assembly here. And what this is a fan unit, and I actually really like Dell's design here. You can pull it out pretty easily. And uh, here we go. We've now, we've now opened it. You just kind of have two little push tabs. And now you can actually see the heatsink underneath. Now the heatsink itself is okay. We have definitely seen some beefier heatsinks and some copper, like all copper heatsinks and stuff in some of the competitive units from other vendors. And so looking at this from Dell and seeing like a such a high wattage uh, CPU, just so you know, this is an Intel Core i7-12700. It's not the K version, it's just the 12700. You 65 watt TDP CPU, you can actually see like that there's a lever for the socket like down here. And this is just kind of a normal CPU that they just plop in here. And I just kind of wish that they had a bigger cooling solution because we're gonna show you in a little 
bit, but the noise of the system is uh, is, is definitely there. Now, next to the CPU socket, you're gonna see that we get two SO DIMM slots. Now on the 65 watt chassis that we have, this is DDR5 memory. So we only get two eight gig DIMMs. And frankly, with a CPU like the Core i7, 12700, I would go a little bit higher. I would probably get at least two 16 gig DIMMs and get 32 gigabytes of memory. That is a beefy CPU. And in fact, it's actually something that we're gonna show you in a little bit is so fast that uh, a lot of people don't just don't have any concept that this is actually faster than server CPUs from a couple of years ago. And notice, I didn't just say server CPU, I said server CPUs because it's faster a lot of times than two pretty high-end CPUs. Okay, now I have this system running over here, but let's talk about performance because that's a big part of the story. So this system has the Intel Core i7-12700 in it. And that you know may sound like a desktop processor because it is, it's a 65 watt TDP processor, but Dell isn't just stopping there because we also get four efficient cores. Now, if you don't know the difference between the performance and efficient cores, we have stuff on that on STH, but the basic idea is that the P cores are the ones, the performance cores that we've been seeing in these generations of systems for years, and the E cores are more kind of like Intel Atom cores that are put here. And the idea is that you have for like background tasks and stuff like that, you have the E cores, and that really gets you a lot more, you know, better or a lot better power consumption. And then when you need more performance, you can shift workloads onto the P cores that we've, you know, had for years. And so just kind of looking at performance here, what you're gonna see is that this definitely has more performance than a, frankly, a lot of the AMD Ryzen systems that we've reviewed. And some of the ones we haven't yet reviewed, we'll, we'll talk about those in a sec. But overall, I think that this is solid performance. It's not, um, you know, it's, it's, you can definitely get way more if you go to the desktop, but I think that that's a pretty nice story just in terms of overall performance of the system. Now, I'm not gonna lie here. When I can finally find a, a you know, E-Core version or 35 watt TDP version, I'm definitely gonna be buying that because I just kind of think that this feels like the system that on 35 watt TDP would be exactly what I want. Okay, minor process challenge. I just realized that we don't have a really good mounting spot in the new studio for this. So uh, we're gonna have to kind of think of some other kind of power consumption thing, but we just have the XTEC power meter here and I'm running the system right there. And this thing is actually at idle right now. Now, something that we're gonna see that's really cool is that this system is only using, gets down to like, you know, six watts, it'll bounce up to 11. Sometimes you'll see the system pop up into the thirties or something like that at idle. And that's just kind of what it's doing even on the Windows desktop. But frankly, one of the big differences, especially because of those E cores, is that you see that when you're at idle on the Windows desktop, those E cores are getting loaded. And when you see that, this system is idling at, you know, five to six watts most of the time. That number, frankly, on, on a modern system is not something that we've seen in a while. Usually these things are, you know, maybe close to twice that, like 10, 11, 9, 10, 11 watts, something like that. So that was one of the big innovations and why I think this is such a big game changer. European pricing for electricity has gone up so much that I think that something like this especially on a 65 watt TDP CPU is pretty darn awesome. What I want to do is also let you kind of hear this thing at idle because I think that's important. So I'm going to be quiet so you can hear this thing. Actually not too loud. It's, it's, you can, I can hear it. If, if that didn't come out on the audio, I can definitely hear it, but it's not uh, it's very, very quiet. One other kind of fun thing though, is just the fact that I just remember that this thing has, I mean, this is a 180 watt power brick. And I went to go configure the uh, this model. And if you do get the 65 watt model, you're probably gonna get a 180 watt power brick. When we first started doing the Project Tiny Mini Micro reviews, most of the systems that we had had like, I don't know, like 65 watt uh, power bricks. And now we're at 180. That just kind of shows how much different the space has got. Now, this is definitely part of the learning process for the new studio, but I do want you to also hear this thing actually spool up a bit. So my idea was that we're actually gonna run Geekbench live here. I'm gonna talk about that result in a sec, but I also have this thing now as a stand. I have the previous gen. I have this one sitting on there. We're about, you know, call about six inches or so from the uh, Sennheiser mic right there. And then I'm gonna go and hold up the uh, power meter, so that way you can kind of see the power consumption during the run. Um, this is probably a really bad idea. We really need to go figure out a way to mount this thing in the future, but it's what we're gonna do here. Okay, so here you can see that we're starting up the benchmark. Okay, so we're getting to the end of single threaded now, and you're gonna see that the you know power consumption has gone up to like 30 to 50 watts max, but the noise is starting to get a little bit louder. And you've definitely seen some of these benchmarks get into the 190 plus watt range. It's absolutely, you know, pretty darn there's a lot of power consumption that's able to go through the system. And that's uh, you know, that's why I think we have 180 watt power brick. Now here you can probably hear the system fan spin up. Okay, and here we go. We got like a little over 130 watts. We saw some peaks a little over 150 here, but that fan is definitely spinning up. You might not be able to hear me over it, but I'm gonna shut up right now so you can actually hear this thing. 
Okay, so now something really cool has actually happened. We're actually running consistent workload just to kind of generate some numbers here. But uh, we've actually seen performance take a little dip here. And you can see that we're only in the 90-ish watt range. What actually is happening is that the processor is thermally throttling and that's actually pulling down our its clock speeds and then that also means that we get lower power consumption. So we're no longer at that like 130 watt range, even though this was a consistent workload that we started on. Okay, so we put that over there because it's still actually cooling down. So just so you know what we just did, I just kind of ran a just uh, Prime 95 test just to kind of see like how long it would take to thermally throttle. And that was less than a minute to go from that like 130 watt, like things are going fast to thermally throttling and only pulling about 90 watts of power. So just as a, a um, interesting thing there, that was a very quick transition to thermal throttle. And I think that's part of it is really due to Dell's thermal design. You can also see things like the clock speed dip and stuff like that. So it's pretty obvious to see like, you know, what was going on there. Now I just had this HP LeapDesk 805G8 mini uh, behind me. So I figured I might as well just show you this real quick. So this one actually does not have the DGPU, but it is a 65 watt TDP one. And you can see that we have a perforated top, which helps cool things like the NVMe SSD, but also the CPU. It's also is using, uh, this one I think is using a copper heat sink. And you can definitely tell the difference between the Dell one where you don't have that copper heat sink, you don't have the perforated top and you start getting thermal throttling a little bit earlier. And so I just kind of, you know, I kind of wish that Dell did a little bit more in terms of the thermal design of this. The nice thing of course, is the fact that you get front to back airflow in this. So you're not gonna, you, know, you can actually stack these things on the Dell ones. But on the other hand, this is pretty darn hot and this uh, stopped running workloads a couple minutes ago. Now in all of these Project Tiny Mini Micro videos, I like to do key lessons learned. And the first one I think is really around that Geekbench run that we just did. Just a, a quick point here. A lot of folks, you know, will have old workstations and these old workstations are running like, you know, old dual Xeon setups. And let's take an example from a dual Intel Xeon E5 2670V1. And this is, you know, definitely like a 10 year old-ish processor, but it was also the high-end eight core that you could get back then. And the reason I wanna show this is because power costs in Europe and other parts of the world are going up. And something that I think a lot of people uh, just kind of gloss over is the fact that a system like this, if you just need CPU power, you know, and you need a decent amount of memory, like 64 gigs, no problem or whatever, uh, you know, this kind of system is actually gonna save you a ton of power, a ton of space, and also it's going to be faster than those dual Xeon E5 2670, you know, eight core processor systems, so like 16 cores, 32 threads total. It's actually gonna be faster than that, even though this is a tiny little system. But at the same time, the fact of the matter is that a system like this is faster than like the fastest dual socket server that you could get just, I guess, 10 years ago. The other key lesson learned though, I think is just kind of clearly around the cooling and just the overall design. There are things like, you know, for example, the SSDs, the M.2 SSDs, you have to still screw in versus being toolless. The fact that this, that this is just kind of, it feels just older than Lenovo's design. I don't know why, but HP is kind of a similar situation. So I, I don't know why I just kind of have that perception, but just also the fact that this was not really able, you know, the, the SSD was getting hot when we were benchmarking that. We saw the CPU thermal throttle pretty darn quickly. Uh, you know, it took a couple, less than, well, less than a minute, like a couple seconds to actually go and start thermal throttling and get a lot lower performance. I mean, I, I just just to me, it feels like Dell could probably do something on the thermal design. You see like this this top here, you see the, the you know, heat sink that isn't like an all copper design. It just kind of feels like Dell could do something uh, better here. Also that thermal design makes this thing get a little bit noisy, which I don't really like. I think these things should be a little bit quieter. And of course, if you just went down to the 35 watt TDP version of this, you'd probably be fine. But this is the one that we have to review because this is what Dell sent. So guys, I hope you like this look at the Dell Optiplex 7000 Micro. It's definitely a very cool system, but that's mostly because of Alder Lake. I do think that Dell has a lot of room to go and catch up to folks like, you know, Lenovo and I think also HP, you know, frankly, that have some very interesting systems. But at the same time, um, you know, there are a lot of folks that aren't going to take advantage of a lot of those extra features. And for them, I think this unit is actually pretty good. There are also a lot of companies that just want to buy Dell and whether that's, you know, Dell, you know, they can't buy HP or they don't want to buy from a Chinese company like Lenovo. That's a good reason that, you know, I think a lot of folks will actually go and buy this unit because, you know, a lot of folks actually, a lot of IT folks just have these things laying around at work because they buy tens of thousands of these things. And so I just kind of want to give this a tiny mini micro review. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy it, well, why don't you give this video a like, click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.